Hi, I'm Riga, and today we're gonna get sad. But before all that though, be sure to like the video if you like it, share it if you think others would like it, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and subscribe if you want to see more. Volume 9? It's... It's a weird feeling, I'm not gonna lie. But we're here, let's... let's drive ahead. Now, before we start, double spoiler warning. Uh, spoilers for the finale of Volume 8, of course. And spoilers for M. Night Shyamalan's The Sixth Sense. There's your warning. So, uh, The Sixth Sense has one of the most famous twists in modern film. It's a twist that people use when joking about twists. And it's one of the ones that's so infamous for people making theories, right? It's too obvious, it's been done, it's cliché. I'm well aware of all of that, and for the most part that's absolutely correct. Check any fandom and you'll find the same groups of theories about everything. Uh, the main character's in a coma, uh, they're in limbo, uh, this person was actually dead the whole time. It's one of those well-known and overdone twists that you throw into a story tactlessly and it has all the impact of a piece of tissue paper. Nothing. It's, it's the, it's all, it was all a dream ending, you know, it's, it's considered bad at this point because it was so good when it was originally done that at this point you can't match it and trying to match it just makes you look bad. But rather than try and match it, it doesn't mean you can't use it. It just means you need a different way to do it. You need the right setup. So yes, this is a theory, but I don't think it's gonna happen, right? I wish I need, I need a different name for these. It's, it's a possibility. Yeah, well, it's just, I guess, theory where it works too. I don't have investment in this one, but I just wanted to, you know, go over what you could do here. Like I said, I don't really believe in it. I don't see tons of evidence it's gonna happen, especially that we only have the finale to go off. And on a narrative level, let's just instead discuss the possibility. It's something they could do. And the setup lets us be a bit more unique about it. So yeah, it's the Sixth Sense twist. And uh, if you got this far, hopefully you, you know, aren't still watching if you don't want to know that twist and have somehow avoided it in pop culture. But it's that someone was dead the whole time. In the Sixth Sense, as you hopefully know, the main character, the little boy, can see ghosts and he's being helped by a therapist played by Bruce Willis. At the end, it is revealed to Bruce Willis that he has been dead the entire time. He is one of the ghosts the boy is seeing and he helps him move on to the next life. They help each other. The ghost uh, of Bruce Willis helps him realize what he needs to do and come to peace with his existence of seeing these horrific things and helping people. And that in turn helps him move on to his afterlife. It's very well done, very nice to set up. There's little clues throughout the film, like you never see people directly interacting with him, it just looks like they have been, and they explain sort of ghosts only see what they want to see, and it all works out. So that's that film. It's quite good. So, if we're going to apply it to Ruby, the biggest problem is it would be applying to people who fell, because obviously it doesn't work outside on like Remnant, and that would mean applying it to the Ruby girls, and they're just not dying, are they? They're the main girls. They're not dying unless they're in the very last volume. They're not going to kill one and risk you not coming back for multiple volumes because your main character you love of the, the core team is gone. They're just likely not going to do that. But if, if there was a time to kill one, and I think this is the best opportunity we've ever had. I saw people saying that they'll be so mad when Yang comes back because that was such a perfect death. I disagree. It, there wasn't enough in it for me to buy it as a death. But you could do something more, expand on that idea, and that would sell it. See, that's the other thing, to sell it to the audience it has to be big, it has to be, like, there is no denying this. Like, but you don't want to be gruesome, right? It's someone, it's a character you love, you don't want to see them like beheaded on screen or something, it's too much. So, how do you confirm that it's real, and confirm they're not coming back, and they died, and not have it, like, ruin you. Especially in, like, a, a travel volume, right? Not, like, in a war. If it's in a war, it's, like, final volume, then it happens. But they do that at the end, so that even if you're mad about it, the show's over, right? Which is an interesting discussion of how you kill main characters. There are several ways to do it in general. Uh, the usual first one everyone goes to is the heroic sacrifice. The one where they do something impossible and incredible to save everyone, and they know they won't survive through it. They accept it, they go out on their own terms, and they look epic while doing it. It usually diffuses a lot of the hate for it because they do something so great you can't complain, and they go out, like, the best they could. They went, if they were gonna go out, they went out amazing. And their impact on the story is felt forever because what they did changed things. The other one that works really well is the shock death. The out of nowhere they just get stabbed or shot, and you get the feeling that it's very real. The music, the camera, it puts gravitas on it. 
But importantly, they usually die slow, but not really in pain. They accept it, they say final words, they inspire their content. This is a motivation death, as it spurs the others around them to press on, and again, this is usually near the end of a story. The other version of that is the more heartless one, this is like the beheaded in battle one. The exceptions are, they don't get to say anything. Instead, like, it's all quiet, you think you're safe, and then BAM! Dead. No coming back, something real serious. This is the other motivating death, where it's sudden, unfair, and painful, and the characters usually then go on a rampage in grief as response, and it motivates, like, an immediate action response. I want to give examples of these, but I don't want to start spoiling any more movies, but if you're a movie person and story reader, you've seen all these before. And of course there are exceptions and people that do it other ways, but these are usually the methods for, like, we want to take out a really important character, but we want it to be translated that it's very real, and I also want to make people as less mad about it as possible. But the one we're going into today is none of these. It's slightly different, but it should achieve something similar where hopefully you're not as mad about it. Although, of course, someone will always be mad about it, you can't please everybody. So, you know the twist, you know what we're going for, but how do we execute? That's what's important, it's all down to the execution with anything you do. Well, to pull it off, I think you need three things. You need minor hints, growth, and absolutely never mentioning it as a direct possibility. The best way to do this is direct it possibly like a threat, and then you apply later, like you backtrack in your head and realize, oh, it was that way all along. So, we are of course making assumptions here, mostly about where we are. So, the island here, it's clearly weird and magic and strange. Do I think it's on Remnant? Nah. Do I think it's another planet? Nah. Uh, we go through another dimension to get here, it seems very much like it's another place, another realm. I know people on Twitter are throwing around passages about uh, a place the gods made, or one god made before he split, or something from one of the fairy tale books. Sounds likely. They put in a reference, sounds like that. But it's an elsewhere. You know, they couldn't swim out into the ocean they were in and find, you know, the edge of Anima or something. Or some boat isn't going to turn up that got lost on its way to Menagerie. They're not, like, on the planet. I don't even think they're in the reality of the planet. And doing that, lots of people have talked about, well, are we going to see people that have passed away? Is there, like, the afterlife here? And maybe there is and maybe there isn't. But I like the idea of playing with spirits and spiritual realm, and if it is a spiritual thing, and that's where the core of this lays. Because this kind of setup is very easy as a, as a story goal. You wash up on this beach, you're in this other reality, what's your goal? Get out. Go home. You got a world to save, things to do, so you don't want to be here, you gotta leave. That's your end goal. So the problem is facing how you get home. Now while traveling, there'll be issues to overcome, stuff to fight, maybe things to talk to, places to go. And yeah, hopefully things to talk to. Intelligent life of some kind would make this a lot easier as a story. It still can work without it, but it would work a lot better if there was things to talk to. Some, you know, type of intelligent life in this land. So what you do is, you find like a small village uh, with some beings, probably that don't look human so you can distinguish them, and you talk to them. Don't ask how they can talk, same reason there seems to be only one language on Remnant, just, just go with it. In a show that moves this quickly, putting in, like, full language barriers uh, to work through is too much of an issue most of the time. You could do something fun, because they're, like, spirity weird creatures, they could talk telepathically and then sort of be like, it's not language, you sort of just understand it because it's like brain to brain and they're passing ideas sort of thing, and we just hear it as language. You could do something cool like that, doesn't really matter. And that's always fun when, like, you know, someone makes a weird face because they've been told something that the others didn't hear. It'd be pretty cool. But this theory doesn't hinge on all that, so we'll keep moving on. So anyway, you talk to them and they you learn what this place sort of is, or at least the rules. And it's like a spiritual realm. Things are alive here, and things are not. It's a plane. Like, Remnant is just on its own plane in more of a reality. So you're not safe here. You can still very much die. And if you die here, you stay on this side. You can go to the afterlife, like there is an afterlife, maybe this is it, or you can get there from here but you will not be returning home. So that's your threat that lets the audience know that the things they fight here when they do get in fights here, they're very real. So there's still danger while you're here. It's a general threat. So now we know that's a thing. Everyone is of course wary of this, and show like Yang taking a second glance, concerned back at the thing before they go. Because ooh, it's, it's dangerous. So you do these stories that they all travel and bond. I'm sure the Bumblebee people now are clamoring over themselves to say, look, Bumblebee's going to explode all over next volume. Blake thought she lost Yang forever after the fall, and then seeing her again, run up to each other, kissy kissy, magical sunset in the background. And yeah, probably. 
the big reunited after I thought I lost you, we give in to our feelings and we move on from there. There's no immediate danger like about to kill us so, you know, it doesn't get ruined and we just have that lovely moment. Sure, go ahead, that, that sounds fine, do it. People were saying that like, you know, Yang should at least be separated from the group and might have to like find her. Maybe. Honestly, I wouldn't be too worried about it. If they get back together very quickly and easily, that's fine, so long as, like, they go on a journey for character growth. Um, it's fine to get over that hurdle if we get more out of the longer story in the volume. So, yeah, we go on this trip and bumblebee it up along the way. Make it really cute. We have everything to go through with Neo, and that'll be a learning thing as well for everybody. We also have Ruby and Yang to bond as well. She thought she also lost Yang, and they had some falling outs earlier in Aid, and even though they got past it, they also had the revelations about Summer, and Ruby will have to learn about Penny with Jean, lots of emotions to work through. So they all bond pretty heavily, especially the four girls. Really lay on the sister connection thick, because people, including myself, have mentioned a lack of it before, and now they're sort of separated from the larger group, so they have more one-on-one -on -one time. And those things are working out, and Bumblebee has sailed. Ruby and Yang are closer than ever. The group has become even tighter knit, and they work through their grief and sorrow together. At the end, they overcome their big boss fight, whatever that might be, the final battle. It's dangerous, people get hurt, but they did it, they're at the end. All is well. They reach the barrier, and it's like a thin veil. It's like a, like just a curtain, and through it is like a portal out of here. A thin veil that separates the spirit and the living right before you travel back. They all look at each other, they smile with some tears in their eyes as they've made it through this great journey that none would ever believe, and as one, they step through the veil and realize someone's missing. They turn around, and on the other side of the veil is Yang. Everyone is confused, saying, come on, she reaches out, touches the veil, and can't pass through. She was dead all along. She was never leaving, and she knew it. Now you remember back to her giving weird looks to people when they mentioned what the conditions were and how dying here would work or being dead. You go through and think through the volume of all the little actions she'd taken and, you know, why she was doing them. And the fact is, she went on one last adventure with them. To build memories they'll never forget. To finally give in to her feelings for Blake, repair everything with Ruby, to make the most of it. Now she has to stay, and they have to go. The others are waiting back in the world. It's a world to save. Remnant needs them. If nothing else, this proves she will see them again. But hopefully not for a long time. She has faith in them. She loves them. We get breakdowns, tears. Neo in the background solemnly takes off her hat and doesn't interfere. It's a goodbye for now. She'll say to Jean that she has her own mission now to find the others we've lost along the way, and we will be waiting for you guys once it's finally your time. But now you have to go home, leaving her behind. They are changed people, both having this magical great adventure and everything they could ever want, and losing it at the end. And I want to say, yeah, again, look, it's not going to happen, but it is a really unique setup, something along these lines. Rather than heroics, you instead get this idea of a final adventure. The dead person does know it all along this time, but realize that this is their last chance, and you do all the character development, all the things they hadn't done, they held back from doing. Might even question why, in the volume, suddenly they're so open to, to talking and relationships, and you chalk it up to like the fear that they lost each other, but realize in the end, no. It's because the, the person knew it was their last chance. It also means you sort of, in the long term, pay off the fall. Most people saw Yang fall and said, wow, nice fake out, guys. Can't wait for the others to fall. And they did. But this would mean, whoops, the fall actually wasn't the bad part of it. Obviously, this also works less due to Yang's lack of blood, you know, with her attack from Neo. That sucks. And also, by the way, if this happened, you then have Neo, who you've bonded with, and realizing that, oh my god, she did kill Yang. Like, she's your friend now, and you've made it through the other side, but she has to face that she killed Yang. More crazy things you'd have to face on that last conversation before they leave. But yeah, given what we saw from Yang's actual body, there's no wounds, there's no blood, like, what killed her? You could- that's a good question. And I agree with you. Because the truth is, I was using Yang this whole time as an example. Yang got an aura break, clunked the back of her head, and fell. Ruby got an aura break, and fell. Blake didn't even get an aura break, she fell. Neo also just fell, and John also, aura break, just fell. No, 
It would make sense, in fact, if this was not Yang, it was Weiss. She had an aura break, and then she exploded and flew off into the void. If you look at the details and actually watch Weiss's death scene again, it would be the one where you could most likely hide this. They show the explosion go off from underneath the bridge so you don't see her completely. You see her fly through the air and there's no blood or anything, but you do see her fly. And then you see her, she seems to be conscious and she just falls into the, uh, into the abyss at a bit of a distance. You don't really see the details. So here's where I'd actually do it. And Weiss is the one that's dead the whole time. I just used Yang as the example because everyone thought I would. But no, if you want my actual theory about who it would be, it's Weiss. Now, unfortunately, Weiss doesn't have as many running things to sort of get into with other characters. Also, I can see certain people being really, really mad if it was Yang because, hey, they're finally openly gay. And the moment that all comes to be and the ship sails, you kill them. Thanks a lot, guys. So, yeah, as much as you White Rose people are fanatic, it's not a canon thing, and there's no real hints that they're, like, leaning into it on screen as, like, pushing it as developing, so if they kill Weiss, it's not just killing the gay character. Weiss also is, as well, was the least useful until recently, until basically the final battle. She was great there, though. I'm not, like, you know, she was really good in that, so I would hate to lose her after she finally starts getting good combat-wise, but there are some things you can lean on. There's everyone else who's not here. You have Winter and the Schneeze who think she's dead already. You show their grief and coping over the volume as well. But then, the girls return. They all return, except Weiss. And the cruelty of that would be so heart-wrenching and I would kind of love to see it just in the characters, especially Winter's call of vengeance on Cinder already. I'm not sure what Weiss would do over the island journey to build up to that final goodbye, like that final length of bonding. Maybe actually play with Ruby, give in to some of those more childish things that she was not interested in at the time when they first met because she was such a different person and since then haven't been an option with how serious things have been. Ruby's doing them as a celebration of life, like, oh, they made it, and Weiss is doing it because it's her last chance to. Maybe also really talk some things over with Jean about how she used to treat him and how much they've grown into who they are now because they haven't really had an opportunity for one-on-one -on -one time since Beacon, except for maybe in Volume 5, and they were talking about other things, so it just didn't come up, and it would be an interesting way for her to bond with him at the end there. Like I said, it's one reason I don't like it being wise in general, because she has less things to lean on, but because of that, she also doesn't have many more things to do. In general, Weiss is kind of running out of personal plot lines, so maybe this would be a reason to trim her. Especially if she's dodged death once, paying off a detail like her being blown off a platform without aura would be pretty good for a those paying attention type things when you realize when you get to the end of the journey and you flash back to the incident, oh yeah, that did happen, I didn't notice. And her final journey alongside the dead person, they close the book on all the things they had to complete with their friends, as well as complete the journey to get the rest of their friends home, and it's a great note to go out on. Like I said, don't think it's going to happen, but the opportunity is there in a way that it will never be again. The idea of traveling through a spirit realm gives you this option of someone is a spirit the whole time, and they use it to bond the whole way through. And like I said, the unlikeliness is still a thing and will always be a thing, but the opportunity is there, so maybe they take it. Really doubt it, but maybe they do. Anyway, that's all for now. A big, sad idea that won't be happening, but admit it, it'd leave you in a pool of tears if it did. One of those fun things you can only do when playing in a realm beyond the living. Tearful goodbyes with only a veil in between. The potential is so... not going to be a thing. But that's alright, the girls will pull together, pull through and get home, or get back on track and go punch Cinder in the face. But until next time, my name is Rigo. hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope I did alright.